Hey guys, welcome to another video in the Free Sky series. And today I wanted to talk about VFR and RSSI. These two telemetry sensors are actually built into your receivers. Um, and we're going to go ahead and talk about them and explain what they are. So first off, I'm using my Tandem XE radio. Um, so, But this should apply to... Um, anything with the ethos operating system like the TD, or I'm sorry, the X18 or the X20 or possibly even the twin light series of radios, but I have no experience with those radios. All right, so um, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do, um, and you should do this um, any time that you start, is go into model and go to your telemetry and turn on your telemetry. Okay, so if this was a brand new model, you'd see that this list over here would not be populated. But if it isn't populated, go ahead and go to Discover Sensors, Discover New Sensors, turn that on, and then turn it off again, and the list will populate with whatever sensors that you have in there. Some of these sensors, um, like RxBat, RSSI, VFR, are built into the receiver already. And some of these sensors are external, like the GPS sensor, the LiPo sensor, etc. Okay, so the ones that we're gonna concentrate on are VFR and RSSI, okay? The first thing that I do um, is notice how there's a VFR sensor over there, but since this is a tandem, this is the one for 2.4 gigahertz, okay? And there's another VFR and it's set to, it's the one for the 900 megahertz one, okay? Because this is tandem, it's got both. Um, it is important to, um, to display both, okay? But if you notice the labels over here, this is the names. It just says VFR, all right? But you look at RSSI, that says RSSI 2.4, and the next one says RSSI 900. I like to do the same thing for VFR, so that way when I have it, um, on a display, it'll actually tell me because of the label, it says it's 900 or 2.4. So let's go to VFR over here. Let's go ahead and edit it. And this one is the 2.4 version. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go into uh, the name and change it. So I'm just shuttling uh, forward using these as my cursor. And I go over here and let's go ahead and call it VFR 2.4. Okay. That looks good to me. And let's go ahead and go to the 900 megahertz version of the VFR. Edit. And let's go ahead and call this one 9. I'll put a space in between there. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and look at the bottom of this list so we can see what's going on. Okay. Over here, it's got a low value warning of 50%, okay? Let me explain VFR first of all. VFR is valid frame rates. And valid frame rates means the percentage of frames coming back to the radio that has valid information in it. Um, what this is set to, this low value warning, is that's when the alarm's gonna trigger and it's gonna say VFR low warning. It's gonna say that when 50% of the packets um, coming back or 50% of the frames coming back, is not valid. In other words, it has bad data in it, okay? So I'm assuming that because it's set to 50% that, um, you know, it's got a lot of error correction um, built into it, okay? Um, but that's for both the 900 and a 2.4, okay? So if you look at VFR, you think of VFR as the quality of the signal. It's like the number of frames that come back that are good, okay? RSSI, let's take a look at that really quick. So this is a 2.4 gigahertz version of the RSSI. Okay. And this one over here, that one, I'm not going to change the label. It's good. This is in decibels. Okay. Decibels is logarithmic. So in other words, every 3 dB change, so if, if, you get, if it's a 3 dB higher signal, it's double the power. Okay. Um, so you think of RSSI as the strength of the signal. You know, whereas VFR is the quality, this is a strength. It's a good idea to look at both. Okay, so at the bottom over here, if you notice the low value warning, what it'll tell you um, that RSSI is low is at 35 decibels. The critical value is at 32 decibels. And this is baked in. I didn't set that. That's what um, this is set to. So when it hits the low value um, of 35 dB, 
it will, without me setting anything up, the radio will give me a low um, um, RSSI warning. Okay, so that's already that's already set up. Okay, and the same thing for VFR. VFR that's automatically set up. What I'd like to do is, um, you know, sort of like help that along so and put a display up. So if I do get a warning, I can find out, you know, how low it was, you know, and you know what you know what was going on with the radio during that time. So now that we're set up over here, okay. Oh, by the way, okay. If you guys want to see in real time um, what RSI, RSSI looks like in flight, and this was on my Radio Master radio with an, I think it was an R168 um, receiver about, you know, it's about a year ago. Um, and I had a T33 flight. Um, I hooked up a GPS sensor and an airspeed sensor to that plane. And what I did was I real time on the video, I showed the GPS information, the airspeed information. Uh, and the intention of that video was show the difference and how much better airspeed was than uh, GPS. GPS has to be straight and level, okay? If you're going into, into a dive, um, it, it does not show the proper. It shows a very low um, uh, GPS speed, and um, airspeed was a lot more accurate. So I, I was trying to point out that, you know, GPS was not quite as good as airspeed, and I got comments when I posted it on forums and, you know, and a, a comment on the, on the video saying they're not the same thing. I understand they're not the same thing. Um, but if you watch the video and you actually watch what's happening, you can see that um, airspeed is a lot more accurate through the range than GPS could ever be because of the limitations of our, our consumer-grade GPSs. Um, anyways, um, uh, sorry, I had to explain that uh, because I just don't want any more of those comments. Um, but anyways, um, the, on that video, I also recorded the RSSI information. So you can watch the flight and watch the um, RSSI um, change. You'll notice that a lot of times, um, as long once the plane was a little bit away from me, that um, RSSI was down to 50 dB, um, and that was still very good. I didn't have one problem with um, signal loss in that flight, but I think it did drop down to, in the 40s, okay? Um, so you can, if you want to see it, you can check out that video. I'll link it in the description. Um, I think it is kind of interesting to see the, the difference between GPS, airspeed, and RSSI on that flight. All right. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and set up some, um, some displays. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the main menu so we can start. Okay. So this is my main screen. Let's go to my, um, let's go to my next page. Okay. I did this. I set this up for the last video I did that had to do with consumption and current uh, sensor. Um, but over here, let's go ahead and put the RSSI information, RSSI and the VFR information, okay? So I'm going to go into display over here. Let's go over to this one over here. Let's add a value. The value will be, so I click again, the value will be telemetry, okay? And it's going to be VFR 2.4, okay? And, oh, you know what, let's... Let's do it just because, yeah, let's do it to, sorry, I'm being a little bit wishy-washy here. But let's set it up as RSSI, okay? So that's RSSI 2.4. Maybe this one, we will do RSSI. So value. Telemetry. We'll make this one RSSI 900. Okay, we'll make this one, whoops, where is it? There it is, VFR 2.4. Telemetry, there it is, VFR 2.4. And we'll make this one over here, again, value, the value that I want is a telemetry value, and I want VFR 900, okay? Now, I'm also going to do, and I'll show you why in a second, I'm also going to do over here, let's go ahead and do value, and let's do a value of telemetry, and I'm going to do our SSI again, 2.4. And I'm going to do, whoops, there it is. 
Again, we'll do telemetry or value and telemetry. And let's do RSSI 900. You'll see why in a second why I'm doubling it up here. Okay, so those are my screens as configured. These are the ones that we're concentrating on for this video. And let's go out of the um, window so we can see what happened. I'm going to go ahead and hit this button, which is like swiping, and there it is. There is my live 98 decibels 2.4 right now. Uh, RSSI um, is 100 decibels on the 900. Uh, VFR is 100 and 900, or I'm sorry, and 100 also on a 900. And these are just repeating, right? The reason why I repeated them, okay? For actual use, these sensors over here, I'm going to have them only on minimum. So it's only going to show me the minimum number, okay? So let's go ahead and set that up. So I'll go back to display, okay? Go to the sensor itself, this one. Oh, sorry. Hit and hold down. I keep doing this wrong, okay? And instead of maximum, I'll do minimum for this one, okay? Next one. Hit and hold down, minimum, okay? This one's fine. And this one, hit and hold down, minimum. Next one, hit and hold down, minimum. Okay, so let's go back out and let's take a look. So this down here is RSSI real time, okay? This down here, this over here, is VFR 2.4 minimum, um, uh, VFR 900 minimum, and um, you know 2.4 and whatever. So notice that there's like an extraneous data data over there. Probably you know when I first turned on or something was weird and it says the VFR was down to 44 percent because now it's only showing me minimum, not real time. So it's very important that before you fly, that you set up a reset. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to taxi out. And just before I'm about ready to go to the main runway, I reset my telemetry and at the same time reset my timers. If something like triggered the timers, like the taxi, um, reset everything so that way my flight is accurate. Okay, so I already have one set up, which is this one over here. So when I hit this, boom, it'll reset it. And then now it, it starts from scratch from that point on. Okay, um, each of the telemetries, you can go into each of the telemetries and where I, I edited it, you can add um, a reset for that particular one. So for example, for RSSI 2.4, you can add a, a reset individually, but under special functions, which is the way that I did it, I'll go ahead and show that to you. Go into model, page over, go into special functions, okay? Over here, okay? Special function for reset enabled. Momentary switch, I just, I labeled that switch number 10 to momentary switch, so I know it's a momentary. Um, but I think it just said it was called switch 10 before. Um, when I hit that button, it'll reset all my telemetry. And look at that, it says whole telemetry. So let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick. Edit it, okay? Um, so the action that you want is reset. You want it enabled, active condition. So we click that and then hit the button that you want, okay? and uh, reset what? And in this list, you can reset a bunch of different things. Flight data, all timers, all telemetry. Flight data would start from scratch, which is actually really nice, but all I do is timers and telemetry. So I'll do a whole telemetry on this one, right? And then I'll create another um, special function, and that one would be um, the same switch, and it would be um, uh, uh, timers as well, okay? So when I hit that button, it'll reset all my telemetry, okay? So let's take a look over here. Okay, there you go. Um, all right, so um, this now, so this is pretty much all you need. Now, the reason why I did this, okay, you've got RSSI 2.4 and um, 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 RSSI 900. This is signal strength, okay? So before the flight, I can glance at it. Chances are it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine, but actually what I use it for is a downed, plane locator, okay? So if I happen to crash, okay, and hopefully I'm eyeing the plane and noticing where it came down, and I'm trying to find a plane now, I can use these to help me know that I'm going in the right direction. So if I see that the um, um, uh, number is getting um, less, then I know that I'm actually somehow walking away from the plane. And if the number is getting um, higher, then I know that I'm walking towards the plane. 
So these will help you um, if you down a plane. I believe um, um, there is a Lua script. I'm not sure if it's available for Ethos, um, but there is a Lua script that's available on um, the, um, what's it called, the HTX system. Um, that is like an arrow that's using this information to help you walk towards your plane too. But here, all I do is I just take a look at the uh, the number as I'm walking. And as long as the battery is connected um, and I notice that these numbers go up or down, it sort of gives me an idea of whether or not I'm walking towards a plane or not. All right. So this one is set. This is all I need. Now, if I do a flight and I do have some signal problems, I can come back here and reference the minimum numbers and see how bad it got, okay? So this, I think, is important to have to help in, you in, in your troubleshooting. And then you can do another flight, maybe change your antennas or, um, I'm sorry, change the position of your antennas or do something and try to, to, try to, uh, try to figure it out, okay? So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I did add one more thing, which is over here. 98 dB, 100 dB, 100 percent, 100 percent. And all that switch does is a special function, and all that did was read off the real-time RSSI 2.4, RSSI 900, uh, uh, VFR 2.4, and real-time VFR 900. Okay, and that's very simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, again, you go into model, um, move over to special functions over here, and these are these last special functions over here. Okay, so momentary switch uh, seven plays back. So enable, so this is a special function. Um, and uh, the condition is when I hit momentary switch seven, it plays a value of this value, which is RSSI 2.4. And I just did it again, and I just changed them to be 900, 2.4, and a VFR of 900. And so if in flight, that's real time. Okay, so in, if in flight, I feel something's wrong, I can just hit that button. And It'll just go through. 100%, 100%. You know, so if you want to do that, you can. That's very optional. Quite honestly, um, haven't actually used it in flight because I've had, haven't had one problem with, um, you know, losing signal strength so far with the tandem system. So, um, anyways, um, if you want to do that, that's great. Um, you know, but whatever. I, I honestly think that one's not really that necessary. The one that I think is um, is pretty cool and necessary is this having your RSSI values on minimum and having real-time RSSI information available. All right, so that's it for the video. Um, thank you guys very much for um, watching. And if you liked it, please um, like the video and subscribe. It does help the channel grow. Um, and it sort of like helps, um, you know, motivate me to uh, do more of these videos. So thank you very much, guys, and have a good day. Bye.